All right, so in this module, we're gonna go through an example of planar density. So this will be on your quiz. So what we're gonna ask is the planar density, PD, uh, of the 111 plane in the FCC crystal. So I've drawn, again, the space filling model here for the uh, uh, FCC crystal, and you're gonna look at the 111 plane. So uh, see, uh, see if you can do that and then come back uh, after you've done that in the quiz, and we will go over this example in some detail and hopefully uh, get to the same answer that you got. All right, so we're ready to tackle the planar density of the 111 plane in FCC. So again, I've sketched the FCC. Here, I've only sketched the front for us. Um, so uh, again, I'm not showing everything here, just the front face. Um, I'll show you a little bit more detail in a second. Um, but let's go ahead and go through the procedure for planar density. So we always sketch it first. So we're going to sketch the 111. And so uh, one, sorry, I always make the, my table. So 111, I take my reciprocals. So that's still 1, 1, and 1. And so those are going to be my intercepts uh, for the axes. So uh, it's going to intercept X at 1A, which is right here. It's going to intercept Y at 1A and Z at 1A. So basically uh, those three points. And then I connect the dots between my three points. And we see that it kind of goes diagonally through the uh, unit cell here. And that's our 111 plane. So as always, um, these can get tricky to visualize in 3D. So I, I really like to sketch it again, uh, just in the plane of the paper. So if I do that, I start with my... So you can see here that within the unit cell, it's a triangle. And it's, since all of these links are the same, it's an equilateral triangle. And so um, you can also hopefully po uh, point out that there's going to be an atom centered here, there's going to be an atom centered here, and there's going to be an atom centered here. And then since each one of these goes through the face uh, in the middle, there's going to be um, a, an atom centered uh, along that half point too. So what we're going to have, and let me sort of switch uh, colors to show this better, is we're going to have an atom on the corners, right? And then each one um, in the, sorry, they, they each go through the uh, center of the face, each face. And so that's going to be going through the face-centered atom right in the middle. So it's going to look like that on each point. Try, trying to draw it as best as I can. <laughs> uh, but there's going to be one at the corners. And then these are the face-centered positions, and it goes right through the middle uh, here. All right. So this is our, uh, you know, again, just a re replication of this because it's hard to see sometimes uh, from the three-dimensional, especially if, if you have to sketch it. So that's more or less uh, what it's going to look like. So that's our first step. So we're going to have, we've drawn the plane. Now we need to determine the area. So here, unlike the previous example, um, it's not a square. Our plane is actually a triangle in the... Um, um, within the unit cell. But we do know the links, right? Because these cut halfway through the square. And so if this is, if this length is A and this length is A, right? It's again one of those right triangles. And so we can see that this length in red, which is equivalent to the length over here, is going to be that Pythagorean theorem hypotenuse. And so square root of 2a. And the same is going to be true for all of them because they all cut through the, uh, the diagonal of a face. And so all of these 
r square root of two a. That's our our lengths. And so to determine uh, the area, then we need the area of an equilateral triangle. And so that's going to be uh, so we're going to get the uh, area of an equilateral triangle and plug in uh, using our measurements here. All right, so I've looked up the area of an equilater equilateral triangle. So that's my area, and it's going to be square root of 3 over 4, and then it's going to be the edge length squared. So in this case, the edge length is square root of 2 a, and that is squared. So that one I just need to look it up uh, to find the area of our shape in the, um, the unit cell. So that gives me the area of the plane, which is the second step. And so that gave, this gives it to us in terms of a. So the next step is looking at our uh, plane, we want to be able to determine the number of atoms centered on the plane. So I've drawn all, drawn, sorry, uh, all the, the, uh, the atoms that are centered on this plane in this sketch here. And so now I need to count them up in what's within the, uh, the unit cell here. So let's start and let me sort of shade it in as we go. And I'll start with these face centered atoms. And so I'm shading in the portion that's within the unit cell, right? And so hopefully you can see that this shaded in portion is one half. So there's three times one half uh, atom corresponding to the face centered positions. All right, so the next part uh, we need to know is these, the corners. So here you can see that it's a smaller fraction and if we know something about equilateral triangles, it should tell us that this angle is 60, right? So you can always do it by the angles here. And so you basically want to calculate what is uh, 60, which is our angle here, uh, compared to the whole circle, which would be um, which would be our um, the whole circle, right? So that's the fraction that's within the unit cell, right? So that's what we're going to do, and that gives us either um, uh, 0.166 or 1 sixth, right? So basically we have 1 sixth of an atom here, and that's going to give another 1 sixth, another 1 sixth. So we're going to have, if we're counting the number of atoms, we're going to have 3 times 1 sixth. All right, so counting them up, we've got the 3 1 halves atoms here. Um, and then we've got the three one-sixth atoms, the ones on the corner. So if we add that up, we've got three halves plus three sixth, which is also one half. And so that would give us four halves or two atoms. All right, so we've got the number of atoms within the unit cell. We've calculated the area and uh, because this is going to be in terms of R and this is in terms of A, we need now that relationship between A and R. And at this point, I'll turn your attention back to the linear density video uh, because we've already calculated it for that based on the close pack direction, which is actually one of these directions. And so from that video, if you recall, we got 2 square root of 2 A is equal to 4r, and if we solve for a, we can get that that's 4r over square root of 2. And so now we're ready to put all this in to the planar density equation. So let me write it over here. So we're looking at the planar density for the 111, and we're going to plug in the number of atoms. So we got that up here as 2 multiplied by the area of uh, an atom, which is pi r squared. And then we're going to, um, on the denominator here, uh, we are going to have the area of 
the equilateral triangle or area of the plane within the unit cell, which is what we calculated here. However, I'm going to plug in A uh, that we have for our relationship into here uh, to get um, the area and so that the, the R's cancel out. And so that would give us square root of 3 and then 4 R over square root of 2, all that squared. And so here I'm just kind of putting it all in here so that we can just kind of, we see that the R uh, squared is going to cancel out here and here. And then I'm going to just plug the rest of it in. Um, I'm not worried about getting kind of the, the lowest uh, fraction here uh, because I'm more concerned with the decimal. So if I work all of that out, plugging in all these numbers, I get a planar density of 0 0.907. And so that's what I have for this plane using the number of atoms, using our area of the plane within the unit cell, and then converting it with my relationship that I already developed for FCC. And that all gives me that the planar density of the 111 plane is 0 0.907. So that tells us that 91% of that plane is occupied by atoms, and then that you know, approximately 9% is the empty space between these atoms.